Hello Year 5 and 6 and welcome to today's lesson. Today we are going to be planning the story arc. So yesterday we looked at all of the vocabulary, the grammar, the sentences that we might want to use and today we're going to look at the story arc in terms of what's the problem that Will is faced with, what's the solution and how are we going to solve that. We're going to write a short story this week so we're not looking for two to three pages, it's a short story, it's concise which means we've got to really be careful on when we plan and how we plan for this story. So I'm going to talk you all through that as normal, and then we're going to look at how we're going to plan it, and we're also going to see how Will in the book escapes. But before we find out what happens in the book, we're going to plan our own story arc. So let's get cracking. So today we're looking at planning three parts of your story. We're going to use adverbials to link paragraphs and we're going to plan to use year five, six spelling words. So what did we achieve yesterday? At this point, year five and six, we should be looking in terms of what have we actually been able to plan yesterday? If you come into this where you had a bit of a day yesterday where you didn't have many ideas, then remember you can go back to your Teams page. And if we go to our activity again and we look in class notebook, we can potentially magpie and get some ideas from our friends that have been sharing within that class notebook. But today we need to think about what we achieved. So what did we plan for? What vocabulary did we use? What sentence starters were we going to be using? Hopefully you've got a lot of ED, ING and LY sentence starters and you can potentially use them within your story and not always at the start of the sentence as a front and adverbial. Now today, we're going to be planning the story arc and in our assignment resources you will see that we have two options for you to plan on. So if you don't have access to a printer, do not worry, you don't have to print this out. We can just use a paper and a pen or you might want to use post-it notes or you might want to use a bit of scrap paper. It is completely up to you year five and six. Now when I plan a story I like to use a nice structure and if we look at this one on the left story map D it's asking us for a beginning, a middle and an end. It's quite a simple story map so you would then have to maybe elaborate and put in those vac vocabulary you used yesterday. The one on the right as we can see is a lot more structure to it so it gives us a lot more examples of what needs to go in at this part of the story. So we're looking at the opening of our story and following and picking the favourite. So we're we going to use a rhetorical question. Are you going to describe the setting? Is it going to start straight in the middle of an action? So maybe you're going to start with bang, the door opened from Mr Anthony's hut. Will gazed up at the door and thought this is the time. Chiron Will soared effortlessly with the orangutans hooting and hollering as Mr Anthony and the men came down. You might even want to look at describing the setting. How might we describe the setting? We might want to use some expanded noun phrases. And again, if you would like to, you can come up to here and have a look within this document here. And you might have some ideas. So we'll add in another sentence for you now where we can have opening ideas. Our centers. What does what can Will smell? What can he hear? And we can use this to build up a bank of a setting description. If you want to, you might want to use some dialogue. So potentially you might want to use a conversation starter. Maybe Kaya might say something like, Will, eat, hurry. And we know that Kaya has broken English, so we can use informal writing within that. If we look here, maybe there's a shock or a surprise, maybe the orangutans are going to do something. And that's how we start the opening of our short story. We're then looking at the problem. So what could the problem be between our character and nature, between a character and powerful people or a problem within the character themselves? Well, we can cancel out the bottom one. We don't need to bother with that. We know that Will has a problem 
with powerful people being Mr Anthony and he has to solve that problem and we know that Will is going to be breaking out. So our part of this story now for the problem is how is he going to break out and who is he going to do it with? You might just choose that it's going to be Will on his own. Maybe Will's going to break out and some of the children from the shanty town and the families from the shanty town are going to follow him. Maybe it's going to be Will Kaya and the orangutans. Maybe the orangutans are too scared and they want to stay in the cage. Maybe that's another mini problem where Will has to coax them out. How might he do that? The options are completely endless for this story and it's up to you to put your own spin on it. But if you follow the simple sentences and again, if we're looking within our shared class notebook for ideas to help us magpie those ideas from our friends, then we should be able to come up with a good problem. Now, here it's got some of our emotive language and how the character feels about the problem. So what is Will going to be feeling like at this point in time? Is he going to be feeling brave? Is he going to be feeling petrified, scared, worried, anxious? At this point, go back to your vocabulary from your plan yesterday and have a look. Can you build in a sentence which is going to use those emotions and that vocabulary? Can you look at the similes and the metaphors? And is there an option for you to plan within the story arc where you're going to use those similes and metaphors within your story tomorrow? And finally, we have the ending, the resolution of our short story. So write a list of potential endings and then you can pick your favourite. Maybe there's going to be a message like a moral. Maybe it's going to end with a feeling or maybe it's just going to end with an action in terms of are they actually going to catch Will? Is he going to be found sprinting midway where we may end with an ellipsis? Are you going to let the reader know what happens or are you going to keep them guessing? Because remember, at some point we can build suspense and you can let a reader use their own imagination to think about how are they going to predict and what might have happened to that character. But like it says, write a list of all of the different endings that you can think of and then go back to it and choose your favourite one. And look, can you build in that vocabulary that we chose from yesterday? Now, finally, it's time for once we've finished this plan, it is time for you to pause the presentation if you need some time. We want you to make sure now that the plan is ready. Once you've finished your plan, and again, it should take about 15 minutes to 20 minutes to come up with a really good solid plan. Use the notebook to use those resources. Tag the teachers within the posts. And if you've forgotten how to do that, then you go to posts, click on new conversation, or using from last week's example, you might want to scroll up to the English assignment, click on reply and tag in one of your teachers. And again, Mrs Kirby's name doesn't show up on here, but you can tag Mrs Kirby too. By doing this, it will notify the teachers straight away that you need some help. But we're looking at how you're going to plan that story. Remember, we've got our lockdown writing award, so it needs to be a really well planned, thought out piece of writing. What we're going to do now is pause this presentation and come back to this when you finish finished your plan. We're then going to read the ending of Running Wild and have your plan there. And if you want to magpie any ideas as we read, then now is the time for you to do that. So let's find out what happens. And I'm going to read the story from page 198 where we finished yesterday. If you're reading along with me, you need to turn to 198 and we're going to start at the last paragraph with the short sentence, Kaya shook his head. Kaya shook his head. No, he said, but I have been thinking and maybe we do not need a key after all. What is it you say in English? There is more than one way to skin a rabbit. Listen to them. They are busy with their drinking. If we are lucky, if we are careful, they will see nothing. They will hear nothing. I will bring knives from the kitchen. I have knives like saws, very sharp. It is easy to do, I think. I will saw, you will saw. It will not take long to cut through the wooden bars and then you will be free. The orangutans too. And the jungle is very near. 
You go to the top of this track, cross over the other side and you are there. You are wild boy. I think you know very well how to hide in the jungle. But when you go, you must go fast and you must not stop. Mr. Anthony's dogs, when he finds you have escaped, he will send them after you. Uh, won't, won't they know it was, the, it was you that, that helped me? I do not think so. This Mr. Anthony, I have been cook for him in his house since he was a little boy. When he was young, he was not so bad, you know. Maybe a little greedy, like many of us, I think. But the greed in him, it grew and became the devil inside him. And now he is a bad man, a wicked man. He does not trust me. He does not trust anyone. But he will think I am too frightened to do this thing. And before I hear you speak your poem today, he was right to believe this. All my life until now, I was frightened, like everyone here. Then I listened to the tiger poem. I remember it. I see the skin of the tiger lying on the veranda. I see you and the orangutan shut in this cage. I see men and women and little children working like slaves all around me. And I am not frightened anymore. This poem just pause and think, what's changed inside Kaya? How has he changed as a character from meeting Will and from being seen and listening to the tiger poem that Will spoke before? He got up to go. I come back very soon. I bring you coconut too. I go now. Kai was as good as his word. Within minutes, I saw him emerging from the cookhouse. But almost at the same moment, the door of Mr. Anthony's house opened suddenly and a shaft of light spilled out into the darkness. Two men came staggering down the steps, one with a rifle over his shoulder, both of them loud with drink. Kaya froze where he was, and for a moment I thought they might not see him, but they did. One of them called him over, and Kaya turned, walking towards them slowly, reluctantly. When they shouted at him, he broke into a limping run. I could see that he had the coconut in his hand, that the other hand he held behind his back, and I wasn't sure why, until I saw the blades of the kitchen knives glinting darkly. One of the men snatched the coconut out of the Kaya's hand, slashed off the top it with a machete, drank the milk, burped loudly and hurled the shell to one side. Then, unslinging his rifle, the other one came stumbling across towards me. As he came closer, I recognised him as a hunter from the forest. He was the hosepipe one, the one with the red bandana, the one I feared most. Monkey boy, monkey boy, he called out in a mocking sing-song voice. This time... I shoot you proper monkey boy. He was aiming the barrel of his rifle right at my head. I hugged the orangutans close to me, turned my head away, closed my eyes and waited for it to happen. I filled my whole mind with thoughts of dad and mum and grandpa and grandma and Una and held them there so that they would be with me right to the very end. For long, long moments, nothing happened. Then I heard howls of laughter. I opened my eyes to see two of them walking away into the darkness arms round each other's shoulders, hysterical with drunken giggles. Kai waited until they were well and truly gone, before he ran over to the cage. We must work quickly, Kai whispered. No talk, no noise. He handed me a knife. We chose a bar each and set to work at once. The bars were thick, the wood hard, and each of them seemed to take forever to saw through. But it wasn't the time. It was taken that worried me so much. It was the noise we were making as we sawed. It sounded loud, loud and rasping, too loud to be a frog, too rasping to be any part of the jungle chorus. I was sure that sooner or later someone must hear it. We couldn't do anything about the noise, but I could do it quicker. I got up onto my knees so that I could saw harder, work faster. It wasn't at all easy because any movement inside the cage was so restricted. And because the orangutans would keep clinging to my arms and my shoulders, from time to time I was forced to stop sawing altogether so I could detach them and resettle them elsewhere. Kaya had told me the knives would be sharp, and they were too, and with serrated blades. After several minutes of frantic sawing, there was a widen of gap in the bars. I handed the orangutans out to Kaya and then wriggled through myself, tearing my t-shirt. Kaya put his hand on my shoulder as I stood up. He handed me the little orangutans one by one and they clung on. No time to say nothing, he said softly. You go now, quick. Whenever I say the tiger poem, I will remember you. When you say it, you remember me. Now go, go fast. Doubled up, I ran off up the track. 
And when we say doubled up, you imagine him doubled up as in he's hunched over. Slipping and sliding through the mud as I went, I discovered very soon that it's quite impossible to run with three orangutans attached to me. I would have to walk, but walk as fast and as silently as I could. Nothing else mattered now but to reach the safety of the forest before our escape was discovered. I reached the broad forest track, hurried straight across it and plunged almost at once into the forest beyond. And as I walked on into the night, Dad's words kept coming back to me. You can do it, Will. Keep going. You can do it. It was this echo in my head. This and the thought that Mr Anthony's dogs and hunters might already be on my trail that drove me on to greater and greater efforts. When my whole body was screaming at me to stop for a rest, I knew I mustn't. I knew I mustn't stop. The clinging orangutan was as much a part of me now as my own arms and legs, a constant reminder that if the dogs caught up with us, it wouldn't only be me they would tear to bits. I walked on from darkness into dawn and through all the next day stopping only for a few brief minutes to let the orangutans drink from a river and to drink myself. But I soon realised that even this short stop has been a mistake. When I tried to go on again afterwards, my legs had stiffened. My feet were on fire with pain and far from being re reinvigorated, all my strength seemed to have drained away. Reinvigorated there is a word which means to have lots more energy, to gain more energy. All my strength seemed to have drained away. I knew I could not go on much longer. I wanted to believe I must have put enough distance between ourselves and Mr Anthony's mining camp by now. But many pursuing dogs and hunters could never catch us up. I had to tell myself this again and again to reassure myself if it was true. Before at last I was convinced it was safe to stop, I found the right kind of tree. Climbed high into its branches where we made ourselves a sleeping nest of branches and leaves. The rain came down then, hard and straight, but I was too tired to care. I curled up, clutching a little orangutan close to me, and slept like the wild boy I was. And that is where we end. That's the end of the chapter. So we're now going to be moving on to chapter seven after half term. So there's no more reading of Running Wild this week. I want you to have a little think about the ideas there that you might want to magpie. How did Will use his memories to get through his imprisonment? And was Will frightened? So it's now time just to finish off our story art plan. So if you want to pause this presentation and you can share the ideas on the class notebook or you can write them down in your own plan if you want to magpie anything that Michael Moore Porgo used within that text reading. And then we're going to move on to our adverbials for cohesion and how can we use adverbials to link the paragraphs. Is there anything from this slide that you can pause that you want to use within your story arc? Do you want to use one for your opening, maybe for the problems or for how you're going to resolve the problem? Maybe when you're introducing how Will feels. See if you would like to magpie any of these ideas and put them into a sentence starter. For example, I'll share one from the exception part and I'm going to use despite this. And this will be here for you to share and look at within the class notebook. And again, remember, we go into our general year five and six, click on class notebook and this document will be here. It'll be a working document which everyone will be using. Verbials, I can turn that into a heading for us so it's more clear. Like this. Bill and his family of orangutans. Through the jungle. And that's a sentence that you can magpie yourself, or you might want to come up with your own ideas from this list. Finally, our year five and six statutory spellings. And as you can see here, I've highlighted in green the ones that I think might be useful. So you might want to use as a sentence starter for you. So it's a working document. Is how you're going to use the ideas. So immediately that we spell it correctly. So we'll go back to how we spell it. I double M E D I A T E L Y.
immediately were rushed for the jungle. This environment was home for him and the orangutans. We're going to introduce Mr. Anthony. You might want to put the aggressive chance of Mr. Anthony. And this is where you get to share your ideas again. Remember, it's that opportunity for you to magpie ideas together. Would you magpie any of the other spellings? And these are our year one all the way through to year four words. So we have words here that are, but we shouldn't be getting them wrong year five and six. But if you want to just double check and make sure we're looking at because, come, there, your, who, where, were, make sure we're spelling these words correctly. Pause on this and make sure if you want to add any more vocabulary from our common exception words to put them within your plan. So time to share your plan. Again, this is the point now where we can end the lesson. Go to a family member, go to a sibling, share your ideas. Maybe you want to post them within the discussion post and tag your teacher, share them within the class notebooks. And we look forward to seeing and looking at the work that you turn in so we can help you and support you with your writing as we move on throughout the week. Have a lovely day. And again, we cannot wait to see these stories and you're doing such a good job. So keep up the resilience, keep up that wow improvement, that no limit learning and keep up being curious about how we can make our work better. Have a great day, year five and six. Goodbye. <laughs>